that's it. That's the uh, Galena Smash. Um, I've had a little bit. The head's dissipated, but yeah, that's it. Pretty clear. I'm turning around. I'll talk a little bit. All right. Good solid beer. Happy homebrew Wednesday. Woo. Mm. Mm. All right, guys. Let's talk about some stuff. Um. Yeah. Look. Look what I built. This is a uh, fermentation uh, chamber that I made. Um, it's made just out of some two by fours. And uh, that was my original kegerator that I converted over. Well, I made a kegerator. I had a collar on it, took that off of there, but then I used it to uh, ferment like lagers. And um, if I didn't have enough room, if I need something a little bit cooler than ambient when I was in the house, I would throw it in there. But now, now I've got. Something I could probably get three carboys in there, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, um, I need to get need to get the front on it. Um, I need to get the controller made, uh, put together, assembled anyway. No, then I've got this bad boy. Um, this is the island of my old house, and it's kitchen island. And I had it sitting in the garage, and I've been using it out there during brew days. But I've got these little two-inch casters that I've had laying around for a while. Um, they're all swivels. I've got four of them, but it's not a big deal. It pulls around and um, it stays stays in place pretty well. But anyway, I've got this little project box. I've got switch and I've got this little ink bird dual stage. It's got the ink bird there. It's Fahrenheit, and um, yeah, we'll go from there. Should be pretty cool stuff. Anyway, let me put this down and we'll get together. Cool. This is my old controller I use single stage, so I'm probably going to cannibalize. I'm probably going to go ahead and take and cut this off, probably somewhere in there, and uh, attach it to my uh, my ink bird. But anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. I know it's pretty thrilling stuff. Now that I'm sitting on the island that I can move around, I don't have the light back here. I've got it over here, so it's shining, so it's a little bit better. Much better? Not really. But anyway, so yeah, that's it. Got the... Um, Got that done. I gotta button up a few things. I've got to, because the fermentation chamber is right there. Gotta button up a few things on that and make the, make the cover, make the lid for the front. Um, seal at the back. Um, make the controller. I gotta put the controller together. And, uh, yeah, I gotta get that done. Um, so I wanna brew a Baltic porter. So, um, cause I need to, I need to logger it. Uh, well. I'm gonna use 2112. You don't really need to logger 2112. But anyway, it, it, it ferments at a, 60 degrees is what I like 2112 at. So, anyway, um, yeah, I need to um, finish that up, get that thing started up. And uh, one thing I'm going to show you guys. This duct tape is crap. It's like, um, it's sticky, but it's like a, just like a plastic tape. It's better than the old duct tape that you see, the gray stuff that people make dresses and tuxedos out of. But it is not as good as the uh, silver foil reflective stuff with the white um, backing on it. So, yeah, I just happen to have that stuff at the, in the garage, but it's not as nice as um, it's sticky, not as sticky tacky as the other stuff. So that being said, um, yeah. Um, as you guys can probably tell, if you guys pay attention to your feeds, uh, I've got three SJ port reviews out there. So yes, I did make it to the second round. So I am going ahead and doing my reviews. Um, I got three down, um, I've got six to do. So that'll be pretty fun. Um, so yeah, that's it guys, um, I don't really have a whole lot to talk about. Um, now I've got, you know, extra workspace other than just my countertop and the top of my keyser. So I've got, um, I had, well, in previous videos you guys probably seen that I had, um, a workbench so I removed part, part of my workbench. Well, that's the three quarter inch plywood and the masonite from the top of that. So that makes for a nice, so I've actually got like another workbench there. <clears throat> and the reason it's that size is because I've got my keyser up against my, um, the, um, 
oh, um, fuse box, right? We'll call it fuse box I, because the technical term kind of eludes me at this point. So I've only got a limited amount of space between where my keyser is and where the uh, sub pump is. And I want to put it there against that wall because I'm not going to use that wall for anything. I'm not going to put any brewing equipment there. So uh, eventually the brewing equipment is going to be right here behind me. So I can use that window right there for um, ventilation. So, yep, that's it. Um, yeah, button that up, put the controller together. Um, should be awesome. The only thing is, is that, um, let me turn you guys around. You can see right at the base, base there where the, where the compressor is. Um, I've got to figure out how to seal that up a little bit better. That worries me, but I think I'll be okay. I'll get it figured out. Um, yeah, besides that, that's it, guys. Um, so I'm probably going to have to, uh, I should probably do the smart thing and rebrew my SJ Pour beer just in case I move on. So, but I don't need a fermentation chamber for that. That'll be just fine at Ambient. All right, guys. Um, yeah. Oh. Good one. And then nothing spectacular, but just a just a really clean, easy drinking smash. Pale. It's kind of kind of um the IBUs are around it's around 55, so it's it's about IPA range IBUs, but it's all two row, buddy. All two row. You said you can't get pale, straw pale beers with a rims tube. Anyway, alright guys, cheers, peace.